Dr. Marley Morris. All right. What a huge crew. I mean, can y'all hear me in the back? It's like an echo. It's like at the Astrodome or something. Um, no, that's quite all right. Um, my name is Marley Morris, and I am so proud to serve the students of Humble ISD as the Career Technical Education Director. Um, and uh, I've had several people concerned about my health lately, so I want to address something. I ran into a horse feeder last night. That's what this is. That is a true story, a scar on my, my head, only an humble that you can actually say that and that'd be true. But uh, no, I'm teasing, kind of. Um, but I want to talk to you briefly about uh, our 72nd annual livestock show that's coming up, along with our auction. And uh, for the two-thirds of the room this way, you have some flyers. Um, you guys in the pack, I'll get you when I walk back. It was just a bumper crowd today. Um, sorry. But I'll get you in a sec. Uh, but we have our 72nd. I'm not going to go through the – yeah, Trey's got it in the back. He'll start passing those out, too, in just a moment. But – I'm not going to go through day by day, but we have uh, our, our livestock show starting on Wednesday, February 6th, and it's there at the Humble Civic Center. We're so proud to call that home, and it goes all the way through, uh, th through Friday. Friday is our livestock auction. A lot of buyers are out in the crowd today, and I thank you so much every year coming and supporting our students. We really much appreciate that. Uh, our buyer's barbecue starts at noon, and we walk those kids and those animals inside the ballroom starting at, at 1.00. So if you've never been to their auction, please come. Uh, my business card is back there. I'd love to get you in touch with it. No pressure, um, but uh, we'd love to have you guys come and, and just be a part of the excitement. It's a lot of people, probably almost 1,000 people. Now, we'll have Jerry and Adam. Uh, I don't know if Ms. Tarkington's going to come up here, if Christy's going to come up and talk about the barbecue cook-off. I won't steal their thunder, but there's a lot of cool stuff going on beforehand, uh, a lot of exciting new changes this year with the, with the barbecue cook-off. But following that comes into us. Um, now, if you flip over, sorry, guys, in the back, but there's a map in the, on the back. And we did this to kind of help you out in terms of how things are going to change. Uh, bringing the carnival back. That's all over Facebook. That's good stuff. Uh, so to accommodate that, uh, to accommodate that carnival, um, they have stepped up. The, the rodeo has really stepped up. And for our awesome buyers, they're going to do some valet service for you. So it's going to be top-notch stuff. You know what I'm saying? So come on out. Um, we have a, a circle drive here. They'll help you out the day of. This is also on our website to, to find that information is there as well. Now, in the middle of the week, this is, and we like to do everything free. So, yeah, I want you to come buy my, anim my kids' animals. That's important. But um, on the 6th, there is a career expo. And that's what I have up here. And this is, if you want a booth, it's free. We have under 1,000 people, around 800 to 900 folks come out to this career expo. It's held in the ballroom as well. And this is where we showcase all nearly 170 CTE courses that we have in our Humble ISD schools. It's awesome. Everything from STEM, robotics, uh, nursing, uh, welding, uh, criminal justice, you name it. Uh, it's really some really cool stuff. And if you want to bring a booth and you just want the, the community to see what you do, and we have plenty of businesses that do that. It's free of charge. Um, just take my business card and I'll get you in contact with the person who needs to do that. Or you can um, see that flyer there. It's got some information on, you, on that as well. So thank you so much for supporting Humble. Uh, we're so proud of you, and uh, we're looking forward to our 72nd year. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Morris. A lot of exciting things about to happen here in Humble and the Humble ISD. So speaking of Humble, and let me introduce also our elect other elected official here. I've introduced him earlier. He's also part of the planning committee. City Councilman of Humble, Norman Funderburg. And, of course... Mayor of Humble, Mr. Merle Aaron. So without further ado, Mr. Merle Aaron, Mayor of the City of Humble. Thank you, Scott. Well, first let me uh, start out by saying thank you for being in Humble. Uh, thank you for being here today. Thank you for all the times that you come through Humble, that you shop in Humble. Uh, I always like to say shop local, shop often, and, uh, and bring your money. But... Uh, uh, I also want to uh, emphasize that we do need to support the uh, Humble Livestock Rodeo. Uh, anything that the school has to do, uh, uh, we want to be a part of it. Uh, we mostly uh, support right here in, in the city, but uh, we are also uh, very uh, interested in what takes place in our school district. But I'd like just to start out by saying uh, and, and uh, just 
making one comment that uh, Norman and uh, Jason always make. Uh, I'm located on the corner of progress and, and history, heavy on history. Uh, we like to say that the Humble is, uh, is growing up and growing out. We can't grow too much because we're a small little area that's confined by a, a little larger area called Houston, but it works out good for us because we, uh, we depend on Houston also. Uh, one of the things that I like to say, uh, uh, we have our different areas of Tascacita and Kingwood, but I also want you to know that whatever's good for Tascacita, Kingwood, is good for Humble. What's good for Humble is good for you. And we like to be that partner that we can do all that we can do to uh, make it a very, uh, uh, that we can work together and do the things that's going to make our area grow and be recognized as an outstanding area, and it is. But you know, I'd like to just make a, a couple of things. Uh, if you, when you walk out, if you look uh, directly to the north and a bit to the east, if you're from uh, Umble High School, there will be a elevated storage that's going to raise and it's going to say, fighting wildcats, and it's gonna be in purple. And so we're looking forward to that. And it should start raising in the next couple of days and it should be completed by the end of this week. And so we're looking forward to that. There's a lot of things happening in the Humble. Uh, Counts and Landing, which you'll probably hear about a little bit later. Uh, we're excited about that with, with uh, Jack uh, Bombach and his group. Uh, we have a 17-acre uh, development that's down the road there, that Buda Vedica, which means green door. And uh, we're looking forward to that. That's future. Air 59 is, is underway, and it's, uh, it's developing very quickly, and we're excited about all that's going to take place there. Uh, Floors Galore is, uh, is down the road, but we're looking forward to that. And uh, Townsend West is complete, almost. We still have a bit to do there, but uh, that helps get that traffic right around Humble to where we don't have the congestion right downtown. And we're, uh, you know, we've, uh, uh, we've looked forward to this and it's taking place now to where we can get the traffic through and around Humble. And, and uh, you know, we know that Humble has a traffic uh, uh, situation and a problem, but that's much like every place else in Harris County. Uh, there's no place you can go without a lot of traffic. But we put a slow turn down there at the corner to where we don't have to stop everybody. And so if you, <laughs> we're getting some claps on that. Uh, I'm, I'm one of the main ones that clap because uh, I always hated to stop there. Dr. Ganim is, is a facility is coming into place very soon and we're looking forward to that being completed. Uh, Memorial Herman, their tire is, tower is open. Uh, what, a, what a great community uh, uh, benefit that is for our area, and we're looking forward to that. Uh, most of all of our businesses are open. Uh, we, uh, we struggled through Harvey, just like everyone else in our county, uh, but most of our businesses are open and doing very well. And again, I want to say shop local, shop often. And, uh, but, uh, you know, one of the things that I really want to emphasize is that... Uh, we can handle situations like Harvey. And I've always said Texans can come through. And I seen this come through with Harvey. I seen people who were helping not only their neighbor, but the people across town. And so I, was, I couldn't have been more proud of our area uh, all around us. I support the, the chamber. Uh, the chamber is a, is a phenomenal group of people who serve this community. And uh, I want to thank you for being here today. Thank you for being an humble. Come back. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, it has, has grown quite a bit over the years, hasn't it? I think you got here in mid-70s, I believe? Uh, that's true. Yeah, so a lot of, lot of changes since then. Uh, so speaking of changes in growth, if those that live in Fall Creek or that area or along Atascacita Road are going to be... Inter uh, very eager to hear our next speaker, so please help me welcome uh, Victoria Bryant to give us an update on the Wilson Road project. Victoria? Hi, thank you for having me. This is my first Humble BizCom to attend. Typically, Kent Klingerman from our Community Assistance Department attends. I am 
in Commissioner Cagle's office. He is the commissioner for Precinct 4. I am the assistant director of the Capital Improvement Projects Division, so I handle our current construction side of things. So Wilson Road, I'm sure most of you are aware, it's currently under construction from Beltway 8 to Atascacita Road. The improvements include upgrading from a two-lane asphalt pavement section to the four-lane concrete boulevard, which you can see very clearly now. Uh, the contractor was given notice to proceed with construction efforts in January of last year, so January 2018, and it's a 630-day contract, which would have them completing the project in October of this year. However, the contractor has been moving very quickly, so he is currently ahead of schedule, and we do anticipate that being completed sooner than the contract completion date. Um, Improvements also will include a traffic signal at Greens Road. That's going to be a new signal. Some modifications to the signal at the Beltway, at Canyon Village Trace, and also Atascacita Road to accommodate the widening. Um, there will be median swale ditches to include LID components. LID stands for Low Impact Development. Um, it helps address stormwater quality, it'll slow the flow of water, help absorb some of the pollutants and things before they go into the storm sewer system. So that will be in the ditch along with, uh, in the median ditch, along with some ditches on the outside curb as well. Uh, if you have any questions about the project, you can contact our office. Our website is out there. It's www.hcp4.net. And let me know after if y'all have any questions about the project. So, thank you. Thank you, Victoria. Well, you heard Dr. Morris talk earlier about what's about to happen with the Humble Rodeo and Barbecue Cook-Off. So to give us all the information and all the great details, please help me welcome Adam Foster. He's president of the Humble Rodeo and Barbecue Cook-Off Committee and Jerry Monbaron, executive director of the Humble ISD Education Foundation. Jerry? Thank you. Thank you. So, yes, as we've talked about, Humble Rodeo and Barbecue Cook-Off is coming. Humble Rodeo is a 72-year tradition in our community, and it's one that not only we are very proud of and our community is proud of, but it's also very well known in Texas. And this event would not happen without two really important groups of people. First of all, our sponsors. Um, that's what makes it happen every year, and we are so very grateful. And there's a long list, and there are many in this room, and we are just know we are very grateful for all of you. The proceeds from this event go back and support Umble ISD through the form of grants from the foundation. So when you hear great things from Dr. Osborne, Osborne talk about Quest High School and Jatata talk about things at Umble High School, those are monies from these type of events that go back and support those programs. So thank you very much. The other group of people that make this event happen is our volunteers. We have hundreds of volunteers that help the day of, that have been planning and make this happen. But let me just say there are seven people in the executive committee that really meet pretty much the day after the event ends and keep meeting all throughout the year to make sure this happens. They give a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. And Adam Foster is the president of that committee. So I just want to thank him very much. And if you can join me in thanking the entire committee for putting this event on. So. Yep. Now that she got the technical stuff taken care of, we'll get to the fun stuff. <laughs> so we got a lot of uh, fun, exciting things changing up and, and doing some different things this year. We actually partnered with the uh, city of Humble and Jennifer Wooten, and she is uh, doing our competition called The Voice, which will be happening this Saturday at 7 p.m. at the Bender Center. We are going to uh, have Sarah, Sarah Grace uh, performing over there, but we what, what The Voice is is we take... Uh, the kids from the school district can come and compete. Uh, they will, we will pick three winners, and those three winners uh, get to sing with the entertainment on Friday and Saturday night of the rodeo. So they, kinda, they get to be a star and everything else. Aaron Watson's doing something a little bit special. He's going to do uh, just an acoustical performance solo. It'll be the first song out. So that'll be, that'll be really neat. So please come out and support us at the Bender Center on uh, Saturday for that competition. Uh, we'll flow into uh, rodeo uh, and cook-off. Our cook-off is first. That is February 1st and 2nd. So we, uh, we are the largest KCBS, uh, that's the Kansas City Barbecue Association. We are their largest uh, cook-off in Texas. 
So it's it's a pretty pretty huge event if you haven't been out there. It's wonderful. We're bringing back the carnival. It'll uh, actually open up January 31st and run through the 8th of uh, February. That'll all be there at the Civic Center. The carnival is uh, open to the public. Uh, you do not have to buy a ticket to our cook-off. You do not have to buy a ticket to our rodeo. This is a big community thing. We sent out surveys this past year asking people what they missed about the event, what they would like to see back at the event, and the carnival hit just about number one on everything that we had. So we started trying to make uh, arrangements for it and interview uh, different contractors and everything, and we finally found someone to partner with, and uh, I think it's going to be a good match. I think everybody will be really happy about that. So uh, the cook-off is the first and second. We tried to, we're going to bring back a cook-off dance. So the, the first we will have a karaoke, so if you like to karaoke, come on. So from 4 to 7, we'll have some karaoke where you can perform on one of our stages and sing your karaoke. And then from 7 to 11, we'll have uh, just a big kickoff dance on, on Friday, kicking off the event and everything. Uh, Saturday will be a full day of fun for everybody. So even if you don't have a cook-off tent to go to and you want to come and do the arena, our big pavilion, that is the public's cook-off tent. We'll have vendors, we'll have Feed the Public, which is free with your wristband. When you purchase, you get to uh, get a barbecue sandwich, chips, water. We're going to have entertainment going. So at 8 o'clock, we have the kids cook uh, that starts up, and then at 11 o'clock, I start concerts. So we're running concerts from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and we'll only take short intermissions in there for the Rumble and Umble from 3 to 4, and the award ceremony from four to six with our FFA and their pit auction. So please come out and support the kids too with their pit auctions. We'll be auctioning those off too. Uh, then we will close out the, the cook off and go into our livestock show and everything, which we're, we're super excited about uh, partnering up with the Kate Center and the FFA with the, the livestock auction, their livestock show. Friday night, uh, we will have Mike Ryan and Parker McCollum hitting the stage right after our rodeo, and then Aaron Watson on Saturday. So it's, it's going to be a big full year, a lot of fun, raising a lot of money, just doing, doing great things for the community. We're super pumped. I, I appreciate all y'all. Awesome. Thank you, Adam and Jerry. Uh, as Jerry mentioned, a uh, lot of volunteers go in into that and about five years ago I, I know I didn't volunteer but I'm pretty sure Jerry just appointed me on the cleanup committee and so <laughs> I've been uh, been doing that ever since I want to and kind of segue into that I want to thank my dad for a second he 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 brings his tractor every uh, the, the Sunday after the barbecue cook-off and uh, the students that we get from the different high schools that come and help they'll they'll load the trash into his tractor and he's running it back to the waste management dumpsters and so dad thank you so much for helping every year with that so. Uh, as we get back to some of the stuff going on in the city of Humble uh, and at Townsend, you may have noticed the big development happening behind the target, I believe is about where that is. So to give us all that information, please help me welcome Jack Bomback with Saratoga Homes. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Uh, we prepared a little presentation for you all, and uh, I... I I'm a big kind of a nerd, so uh, I, uh, you know, I'll, I'll talk to the, the, the high school guys later, but I 3D printed a model of what we're planning to do in the city of Humble, so that way you all can take a look, at least one of them. Uh, we obviously don't build just one home. Um, so we have a, a, a quick presentation. Let me uh, give you a little background on the, on the, the project while we're getting it set up. Uh, Saratoga Homes is my family's uh, home building company. I've been building homes since I was about 12 years old, or I tell people. I was our company's number one best sweeper. Uh, and I was, uh, I went to Chicago. I, it's kind of interesting because Jason uh, Stuby, our city manager, uh, hails from my wife's college, uh, University of Illinois. And, um, and I came back to, to Texas and, and started building homes. We bought the property uh, in Townsend Landing back in 2014. Um, and because of where it's at and the location, obviously our, our number one concern was flooding. Uh, and just as we had everything queued up to get going, uh, you know, some, some people believe that God does things for a reason. I believe he does them for a reason as well. Okay. Um, we had Hurricane Harvey. 
uh, which kind of stopped our production in, in its track. Um, and, and it was one of those issues that you, you, it, had we built homes in there, those families would have been wiped out. So when the the uh, when after Hurricane Harvey, I went. I actually went out there, and, and there we have a little mountain. We call it Mount Townsend, and uh, it's just some extra fill that had that we had on site. And you could see the debris line uh, where it was, and it was I don't know about six to eight feet over Townsend Boulevard. Uh, so you know we're we're blessed that we didn't start building that we had some delays. Uh, and when the, uh, the city council and Mayor Aaron, Mr. Funderburg, they had the vision of preventing any further issues like that. They passed a, a pretty progressive ordinance with the help of Jason. And they were good enough and humble enough and, and I, I I met with these folks and said, hey, look, we got this property. We really want to be part of y'all. We really want to be part of y'all city. Uh, so it was most of the most of, of what you're going to see today is from their vision. Um, and a lot of developers would have said, oh, forget about it. We'll deed it as a park and move on. Uh, but we are a family business. So every deal to us counts. And I, I tell this to my, my, my uh, folks that I get to work with. I bet my entire life's fortune on every deal, and we're betting our fortune on this deal. So I'll give you a little bit of our presentation, uh, get into some technical details, and then I'll show you my really cool 3D printed uh, townhome here. <laughs> uh, so I, I already kind of gave you the the uh, the background. We're we're actually number 84 on the Builder 100 list, so we're by no means a, a small mom and pop shop. Uh, we build through we've built through Texas, New Mexico, Illinois. Um, and our, our land development company is called JNC Development. Um, so this is what a floodplain looks like, a floodplain map. And as you all know from uh, the flooding of San Jacinto River, um, Zone AE is not where you want to be, and that's where we are. Uh, so <laughs> the areas that don't need floodplain mitigation, and, and one, one of the new regulations had, you know, we're going to end up having to be six to seven feet over the, the, the ground. Now, let me tell you, our, our mayor and, and council member Funderburg, when they met with me, I said, look, we don't like moving dirt around because it's, it's like you're robbing Peter, uh, Peter to pay Paul. You, you're taking dirt from here and you're putting it over here. Well, now that place floods and this place doesn't. So they said, you know, is there a solution that we can get to where you're not going to have to move around a lot of fill? Uh, because inevitably that comes back to bite us. So... What we decided to do, and with, with their, their impressive vision of avoiding floods, um, we, we, I mean, this is a great location. And we build in Fall Creek. We build just north here up in Woodridge Forest, just north of Kingwood. There's not a lot of new construction going on in Humble, and which is kind of nice for us because we're going to be the only game in town, and we want to bring value to the city of Humble. So... That's the location. I don't know if you all have seen it. Uh, I'm sure everybody drives on Townsend Landing. It's a, it's a nice little shortcut past Deerbrook Mall. Um, so we came up with this idea of elevating the homes, um, which I, I wish I could say I was the first one to come up with the idea, but I'm not. Uh, they do this out in California, and they do this in other areas of the country uh, to avoid these situations. So these are what our single families, what we had initially looked at uh, um, building. And then we also looked at doing some townhomes. Um, and we wanted to do it in a fashion to where it was mixed in with the single family homes. Now, I don't know if, if anybody's here heard of a, a, an idea called aging in place. Um, that is where, as you age, you want to be next to your family. You want to be, you want to see your grandkids. You don't want to have to move out because you want to downsize either down south to Fall Creek or up north up to Conroe. You want to be around your family. So we decided to, to intermingle the two, to mix townhomes and single-family homes. So here's some townhome shots, and I actually printed you up a, a version of a townhome. And then we mixed them. So this, the, this is what it will end up looking like. This 
picture's a little distorted, but that's all right. Okay, so, whoops, skipped that one. What we're shooting for is we're trying to shoot for all the lifestyles. So we're trying to hit our uh, entry-level single-family homes, uh, townhomes, starter homes, so that folks that want to get into home ownership can get into it. And at the same time, the, the, the bigger families with the 30-somethings, 40-somethings, with the high school kids, they can also get that bigger home that they want. Um, and then, of course, at the end of the cycle, we want to be able to allow our older generation to age in place. So we did uh, some really cool options, and we're, we're, we've kind of come up with a little uh, uh, catch line. We call it homes for home enthusiasts. So what does that mean? So, so most people that are you know, car enthusiasts, well, they buy the nice car and trick it out and that's, that stuff like that. Well, th these are homes that you can really customize. And by customize, um, and you have this huge space, and it's funny, my, my wife, she says, oh, well, you're building basements just above the ground. And I'm like, well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> so uh, you're going to be able, and we're going to offer options for three- and four-car tandem garages, we're going to offer, essentially what we're doing is we're putting the garage on the first floor of the home. So you're going to have an abundance of storage. And we're also going to offer options for home gyms, for dog wash stations, uh, woodworking shops, um, metalworking shops. Obviously, all the equipment on the first floor cannot be permanent because if there is a flood, again, God forbid, we need all that equipment to be able to be moved. So none of the equipment fit to the house will be in that, in that level. So your AC condensers are gonna be outside on, on uh, pedestals, on platforms, above the 500 year plus two floodplain. And your HVAC equipment more than likely will be up in the attic, just like the rest of the homes in Houston. So here's what we're kind of going for. If you, if you you're going to have the space to do an art studio. Um, if you want to do a rock band, well, kids can get away from doing it in their family room, right? Uh, workout rooms. Of course, that guy looks pretty excited. Uh, car enthusiasts like myself. My wife says, you know, I wish I had a separate space for you and I could tuck you away. These are the kind of things that we're going to offer that we feel are unique to our community and that are unique to the Houston area. Uh, we're also going to be building an amphitheater. I have a big belief in uh, setting up locations for the arts. I think that the arts are kind of going away. Uh, and having lived in Austin where we we've have some amphitheaters, uh, I feel that if you give the kids an opportunity to and a place to do the arts, they will do it. And then, of course, we, we plan on uh, also doing two dog parks. Because uh, we have a lot of dog people in here. I don't know if uh, you know who you are. Uh, and because big dogs don't play with, well with small dogs, we're, we're, we got a big dog park and a small dog park. And I apologize to all the small dogs parks, but uh, or the dog, the small dogs, but our big parks a little bit bigger for the big dogs. Uh, so we, we made a little promise to the to the city humble. Uh, we're a family run company. Our 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 saying is we, the difference is in our commitment. We build every home as if it was one of our own. We want to offer a quality community that not only honors the new flood policy, but is within financial reach of the citizens of Zumble. The goal is to create a community where the grandparents can live in the same community as the working family, while appealing to both lifestyles and both incomes. We want to indulge citizens of the city of Zumble with a brand new home product line that's so accommodating it feels as if they personally designed it themselves. At the same time, we want to offer an innovative product that does not require as much maintenance and expense. So without the, the vision of our city fathers, uh, help of Jason, uh, this would just, it would be impossible. So thank you all for hearing me out today. And uh, I'm going to leave this. I didn't have a chance to actually.